being thrown into a pit of venomous snakes. Could there be anything as bad as that? It's a kind of death most of you might think of as fiction, something you relate to a certain Indiana Jones movie. But what if it really happened? Now let's investigate. Getting tossed into a pit of snakes has to be one of the biggest downers a person can have in their life. We had a quick look at polls taken in the US and the fear to top all others in this country is snakes, easily out scaring public speaking and heights. Just about everyone suffers a little bit from what's called ophidiophobia, although that's an irrational fear of snakes. For instance, many people can't even look at snakes on the TV. Most people would never let a ball python slither over their arms, even though they don't pose much of a danger if you handle them correctly. With that in mind, the snake pit wasn't just designed to kill a person, it was supposed to torture someone mentally because, let's face it, even being slithered over by a hundred harmless snakes wouldn't be very nice. One person who might have died this way was the Viking warrior Ragnar Lodbrok, who popped his clogs in the 9th century. He's now called a legendary king, but the stories or sagas are very likely based on a real person. That was the guy that gave the Britons a hard time when he and his band of elite fighters did their UK-based pillaging. While the legends might be somewhat exaggerated or entirely fabricated, the Anglo-Saxons who were on the end of some Viking bashing wrote about a mighty Viking invader named Ragnall or Rain Hurris, and what we now call France, the Franks were also given a hard time by a bloodthirsty warrior with a similar name. If this guy did exist, maybe he went the way the legends say, being thrown into a pit of snakes. Maybe because it could be a myth. But as someone once said, when you have to choose between truth and a legend, choose the legend. One of them goes that Ragnar was captured by King Ella, the guy that ruled over Northumbria in northern England. Some sources state that Ella was captured by Ragnar and given the tremendously brutal punishment of the Blood Eagle, but other sources say Ayla got the upper hand and killed Ragnar. Let's go with the latter. Ragnar was thrown into a pit of snakes, which has throughout history inspired the odd drawing. It looks as though he was chained up and then had to sit there while a number of snakes slithered over him and presumably injected their venom into him. We're not sure how he died, but in the 14th century someone wrote that Ragnar composed a poem in the pit of snakes right before his death. It goes, Fast to the hereditary end, to my allotted goal I tend. Fixed is the viper's harm, within my heart his mansion warm. In the recesses of my breast the writhing snake hath formed his nest." Okay, so we learned something by reading that. Ragnar wrote that the snakes were vipers. If you know anything about snakes, you know vipers can kill. Those you see in the snake pit in the TV show Vikings are definitely not vipers. Some of them are reticulated pythons, which don't have venom even though they can put the squeeze on a person. The show was hardly realistic, but what if the legend is real and Ragnar was thrown into a pit of vipers. There are lots of different kinds of vipers, but they are all venomous. Take the Malaysian pit viper, which you might see just lying in a forest in parts of Southeast Asia. It's small, kind of cute, and is extremely lazy. That's because it waits for its prey to come to it. It's also why sometimes they end up being trodden on. They're not naturally aggressive, but getting kicked in the face tends to put a snake in a bad mood. Rattlesnakes are also vipers, and they too will generally not attack if you haven't annoyed them or stepped on them. In a snake pit situation, they would definitely bite someone out of fear. Still, people wouldn't just fall down dead. If someone is bitten by a viper, they have time, lots of time usually, to get help. That means Ragnar would have been lying in that pit for a while. He certainly could have sat there and written a poem, although it wouldn't have been an ideal place to pen his thoughts. With snake bites, there are many factors when it comes to death. They are the amount of venom pumped into a person, the person's health, and how they manage the bite. Running around like a loon and screaming is a big no-no since that pumps venom around the body. Still, enough time in that pit would kill anyone. We now have to ask just how many snakes King Ayla had at hand. England isn't renowned for its venomous snakes, nor any other dangerous wild animals. The country does have adders though, a kind of viper that is only mildly venomous. Since the 1970s, England, Wales, and Scotland have only recorded a couple of deaths by adders, and they both involve kits. Nonetheless, if 50 adders had bitten Ragnar, he would have died sooner or later. You also have the legend of Gundahar, a king of Burgundy in the 5th century. He appears in the Volsunga saga a bunch of stories written in Scandinavia in the 13th century. Yet again, like all legends, the story was written a long time after the fact, if there ever was a fact. According to that story, Gundahar was thrown into a snake pit. There's actually a very old image stone in a museum right now that depicts the death. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. You have to wonder if someone would have gone to all the effort in collecting lots of venomous snakes. There have been cases of contract killers getting rid of someone by using a snake. Think about it, it's a great way of making a murder look like an accident. It's just hard handling
killing a venomous snake without it actually biting you. And forget about hiding a king cobra under someone's pillow. We actually found some news stories about a contract killer in India who killed a few of his victims using venomous snakes. There's also the famous case in the US when rattlesnake James knocked off his wife that way. With that in mind, the snake pit would have certainly been a workable method of execution, if not a bit laborious. The question we'll now ask is how dying this way would have felt. Firstly, it would have hurt, especially where the snake bites. As things progress, the victims would have struggled to breathe. The heart rate would have quickened. It's likely their vision would have become blurred. That was the case in 1957 when a snake bit Dr. Carl Patterson Schmidt. Before he passed away, he wrote down how he felt in what's now called a death diary. The bite to the time of death took about 24 hours. The diary can shed light on how the end of someone's life might have gone down in the snake pit. Although, we should say that not all deadly snake venom produces the same symptoms. The doctor wrote that at the beginning he was able to eat two pieces milk toast, but he soon started feeling a strong chill and he was shaking. He then looked in his mouth and saw his gums were bleeding. In short, hemotoxic venom gets into the bloodstream, which leads to leaking blood vessels, and this hemorrhaging just gets worse and the person bleeds all over the place. Neurotoxic venom attacks the nervous system, and pretty fast, the person becomes paralyzed from the head down, and at some point they won't be able to breathe. Venom can also be cytotoxic, meaning it kills the cells. According to the British Medical Journal, England's adders have cytotoxic venom, which can result in hemotoxic effects. So, in those English snake pits back in the day, bleeding would have been the cause of death, rather than death related to paralysis of muscle function. As he was dying, Dr. Schmidt wrote, Slight bleeding is now going on in the bowels. No urine, with an ounce or so of blood about every three hours. Mouth and nose continue to bleed, not excessively. He thought at that point he was going to survive, but then he keeled over. He was later pronounced dead, with the autopsy saying he died from extensive internal bleeding. So, was the snake pit one of the worst punishments in human history? Damn right it was. Probably much worse than getting your limbs ripped off, just because the victim would have died slowly while the perpetrators of his death just slithered around him without a care in the world. Now, you need to watch most painful animal attacks humans could ever endure, or have a look at this.